You might be wondering if there are other 3D printers besides the Creality Ender 3 that are good at printing miniatures and terrain. And well, I've been printing miniatures and terrain on this printer, the JG Aurora A5S for about a month or so. And I thought it was time to share my experience with you to find out if it is another printer that is good at printing those things. Let's do it. Hi everyone, Danny, the 3D Printing DM. Welcome to 3D Printed Tabletop, a channel where we cover all things 3D printing for your tabletop games. I get a lot of questions about other FDM printers for printing minis and terrain besides the Creality family of printers, which is the Ender 3 or the CR10. So I thought this would be a good place to kind of start exploring another competitor from another large company in the space, which is JG Aurora. And specifically with this printer, which is the JG Aurora A5S. For transparency sake, Gearbest sent me this printer for review. No money has exchanged hands as a result of that. After I talk about the printer a bit, we'll talk a little bit about some of the prints that I printed and what my experience was like printing with it. If you're new to my channel, welcome. We focus on printing miniatures and terrain, and that's what the channel's all about, and that's the type of printing that I do. A lot of this stuff is still applicable to 3D printing in general, of course. Let's start with some of the specs. The JG Aurora A5S is a relatively large volume FDM printer. It's got a build volume that's slightly bigger than the CR10 at 305 by 305 by 320 millimeters. And it retails for about $459.99. But like most 3D printers, the retail price is usually not the normal price. Example, it's $399 on Gearbest, $400 on Amazon, but it goes as low as $320 sometimes. It's got this uh, all metal frame that does a really good job of holding everything in. Like you look at it, you can't really see where the wiring is. And that just looks great. <laughs> this model, the A5S, it's also a, an upgraded model from the A5. To my understanding and, and based on my research, most of the improvements are under the hood and are just quality of life improvements. Example, they've added some additional screws for more stability. The glass printing surface is extended to the edge of the bed. The extruder has been raised to reduce the length of the Bowden tube. They moved the SD slot to the front and they've now replaced some printed parts with injection molded parts. They even added a main board with different steppers and it's got a silent motor drive as well. None of those things are necessarily must haves for me. For example, I found a rebranded Sane Smart A5 for $350, which for that $50 difference, yeah, the upgrades are, are definitely worth more, but I don't think those are necessarily game changers based on the printers that I've used. So if at the end of this video, you're still interested, but you think it might still be a little too expensive, check out the A5. It might be worth it to you in your specific situation. Now let's talk about some of the things you won't see on like the Amazon specs page when you look up this printer. It's a pre-assembled kit. It isn't pre-assembled like the CR10 or the Ender 3. All I had to do was put the metal frame under the bed and install these screws to connect them. Literally was a few screws, just took me like 15 minutes total, including reading the manual and going through it and even filming it. You heard that right. 15 minutes total. Second thing is that all of the hardware is self-contained, which is different than other printers like the Ender 3, which are have wires exposed and things like that. And that's part of why this is really pretty nice looking, to be honest. So both of these things means that this printer is just ridiculously fast to get from box to print. And that's really good if you're impatient or if you don't like doing a lot of assembly, which is something you'll probably have to do anyways if things break eventually, which happens a lot of the time, but still, it, it hasn't broken like that on me yet. And I've been testing quite a lot on it for the past month or month and a half or so. So I have faith that it will last a good amount of time for you too. Third is that this is a very big printer. Here's a real comparison of the JG Aurora A5S on my actual desk. It doesn't even fit on my computer desk. <laughs> I have to keep it turned to the side, for example. Here it is next to a small Ender 3. And I think you get the idea. If you don't have a lot of space, this thing might not work as well for you in whatever circumstance you have for storage. Filament feeding is definitely a different approach than what I'm used to. I'm used to feeding filament through manually all the time, but this thing does almost everything for you with the click of a button. It actually took me longer to figure this out and I'm a little ashamed to admit that, <laughs> but I couldn't find like anything online and nobody talked about it. So I just kind of eventually played around with it and figured it out. You just need to push the film in as much as possible and then push this button and it does everything for you. Something else this printer has is assisted bed leveling, which just means that the printer helps you move the head 
to different corners and to the middle. It definitely makes things slightly easier and faster, but I think that this is marketing speech when you think about it, cause you know, you think assisted bed leveling and you think something like an ABL or a BL touch, which are automated and this is not like that at all, but it is a nice help and it's a, it's a plus. It was a pleasant experience for me to level the bed. Something else that this printer came with was this little note that said to leave the blue tape on the bed. So I left it on for a little bit longer after leveling. They have this blue tape on the print bed because they expect people who are new to 3D printing to scratch the surface, which for me is actually very reasonable and smart because leveling is one of the things that people struggle with a lot at first and it's very common. And so if you're new, then this is a great precaution to prevent scratching a surface that might cost a lot to replace. And if you're not new, then you'll be just fine anyways. I went ahead and left it on for a good portion of my test because I didn't do many, much more research. <laughs> Blue painter's tape is something that people use all the time on other beds in order to get better adhesion. So I thought, you know, why not? No harm in it. And it had pretty good adhesion actually. It worked pretty well for me, almost too well because there was a lot of times I couldn't get the prints off at all. And I had to eventually use like a scraper, which sometimes left these little crevices when I did and eventually led to me having to take off the blue painter's tape entirely because there was just too many issues with adhesion in those specific pox. So after I removed all of the blue painter's tape, there's this really nice bed surface that reminds me a lot of the Anycubic i3 Mega's bed surface. When it worked, it worked really well. I don't wanna make that sound like it never worked. It did work quite often, but there was adhesion failures that I had on this printer more than I would like. That's the hardware in a nutshell. Let me talk to you about some of my prints and what it was like just printing on it in general. The big thing I tested on this was the full bed volume. Cause if this is a large volume printer, I felt like I needed to test how well it printed lots of things at once. It was probably the most important test for me, if you will. So I test printed a lot of stuff in batches. For the most part, it handled it pretty well. Every once in a while I'd get some lift or there'd be a small part of the model that would mess up and just kind of ruin the big long batch. But that happens on my Ender 3 and my CR10 sometimes too. So I don't wanna say that it's exclusive to this printer as a learning 3D printing enthusiast. I didn't wanna use hairspray or glue stick or something else like that because this print surface is kind of engineered to work well. And like I said, it did work really well when it did work. When I was printing minis, I had to do some research online and I eventually made my own mini profile, which is something I don't like doing because I'm not very good at it. I'm not very good at the technical, like tweaking back and forth and printing the same model 50 times. I don't feel like I have the patience for that. I usually take something that's good enough and just keep moving. And I was very satisfied with the profile I was able to get for like larger prints like Terrain at 0.2 millimeter layer height, but I could still use some work on my 0.08 or 0.1 millimeter mini profile for actual miniatures. Here's some of the minis I printed. You'll see I left them unprimed so you can see the raw results. This is just after support removal, which is why you see some of those white markings. This isn't filed or anything, of course. So they look a little bit rough, but you can still see the detail capability here. You'll notice with this specific area of the staff, the warping is something where, you know, you'll need to tweak the profile significantly if you want to adapt this for your own JG or A5S. But still for me, actually this was acceptable except for that one little staff. In regards to printing terrain, I think that this is where this printer shines, which is what I found is normally the case with larger printers like this. I was able to crank out a lot of terrain on this printer and it looked pretty decent. Definitely not perfect but comparable to my Ender 3 and my CR10 prints. And I'm sure if I worked on my terrain profile a little bit more, I could get the same type of quality that I was able to get on my Ender 3. Outside of the occasional like under extrusion of the thing, which can happen just with any, with new filaments or different things like that. It wasn't like a systematic issue. This was just like the occasional blob that you'll see on some of these prints. I was really pretty happy with how my terrain prints turned out. After printing with it for a good month and a half, I think this is a very good printer for somebody who wants to get printing as quickly as possible, who might not like doing as much fidgeting and as much assembly, is okay paying a little bit more, and wants to focus on terrain. Outside of that occasional adhesion issue, which does happen with all my printers like I mentioned, 
the printer really gave me no issues. You know, if there was a clog, it was because it was some failure that something got dislodged and it just led to another spaghetti issue or something like that. But no clogs of this machine's fault. There was no issues with the feeding in or feeding out. That worked really well once I figured it out. But those are things that I've had to learn with my Ender 3 and with my CR10 anyway. So if you're new, you're gonna have those experiences anyways. So why not? Once again, I think that has a lot to do with me and my learning curve and my like non-techie background that I'm not the best problem solver when it comes to that type of hardware issue. And once I kind of got that troubleshooting of the bed, it really ran smoothly most of the time other than that. It did well with small prints, maybe not minis, but other small prints and really well with the large drain prints that I that I did as well as some of the other like props like this Walhalla uh, display that I am slowly bringing together. The printer is difficult to mod, so if that's something that you really like doing, it might not be the right printer for you. But that's really a nitpicky con because the, the packaging is phenomenal and it just looks wonderful. It looks really self-contained and great. So that's the reason for that. If you want a super easy, fast setup, low hassle terrain printer that, that does large prints or, or maybe even cosplay parts, I think this is, again, a very good option, even in comparison to the Ender 3 and the CR10. If you want a mini making machine, this is probably not the best bet for you. I'd probably go with an Ender 3 or a Photon if minis are your thing. If you're on a budget, then I definitely think that the Ender 3 is going to be the better bang for your buck as far as value goes. Because none of the upgrades that this printer has are must-haves. I think that they're quality of life and just a nice to have at the end of the day. If it had automatic bed leveling, I think that'd be a very different story. <laughs> If you want to buy the JG Roar A5S, I'll include a few links in the description below. Using those links will help support the channel at no additional cost to you. If you like the work we do, consider supporting us on Patreon or checking out our web shop for some more 3D models like this cool shadow dragon that you see here and the fairy dragon and some other models that we have printed up. Until next time, happy printing and happy gaming.